Welcome back to a numbers edition of Apple a Day. This is the first episode I'm going to be doing in a series of short tutorials for Apple numbers. I'm going to be covering every function available in the formula editor. I'll be explaining how each function works with examples and hopefully be able to show you how you would utilize these functions in real world scenarios. I'm going to be starting with the date and time category of functions and today's episode is specifically about the date function. So let's get started. Uh, as you can see, I have a blank document already open. I'm just going to click on any cell and type in the equal sign to bring up the formula editor. And then I'll type in the word date and press return. And you can see that numbers displays the parameters that it's expecting. So the date function takes in a year, a month, and a day as separate numeric parameters and spits out a date value which can be formatted or manipulated as a date. So for each parameter, I can either type in a numeric value or refer to another cell. So I'm just going to type in today's date. So 2023 for the year. Press the tab key to go to the month. I'll type in two for the month of February and press the tab key for the day. And today is the eighth. And then pressing return will display the date. Not super exciting, but if I click on this cell to select it and then go over to the cell tab in the format section, you'll see that numbers sees this cell as a date value and not as text or numeric data. So I'm going to delete this. And in the first column, I'm just going to type in a bunch of years. Say 2005, 2012, 2018, 2021. And then in the second column, I'm going to type in some months. One, five, four, two. And then in the third column, I'll type in some days. 12, 15, 22, and 29. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to a cell and type in the equal sign and the word date again and press return. So you can see the year is selected automatically by default. Uh, so I will click on the year that I want, in this case, 2005. And if I press tab, it'll go to the month parameter. So I'll click on the corresponding month and the same thing for day, press tab again and day gets highlighted. So I'll click on the day cell that I want. And then if I press return, you can see that it determined a date, 2005-01-12. So uh, that would be January 12th, 2005. And if I click on that cell again over on the right, you can see that it knows it's a date. But if I click on the cells up here, you can see that number sees them as numeric. So I'm going to select the date again and go over to the cell properties. So if I click on the date options or the date formats, uh, let's spell out this date in full. And confirming yet again that that is indeed a date cell. So I'm going to copy this and paste it several times. Press Command C to copy, Command V to paste, move down. And you can see when I'm moving down, it adjusts the, the row accordingly. If I were to move it horizontally, it would actually not work at all because then you can see the color shifted over from here. <laughs> so yeah, moving horizontally doesn't work unless we lock in the columns. But uh, for here, it's working just fine because the dates are stacked vertically. So the selection moves vertically. Now, what's really interesting is you can see all of these dates are accurate, except the last one. Interesting, we put in a year of 2021, but it was February 29th, which doesn't exist. Numbers was smart enough to change it to the next day, uh, March 1st. So if I were to type in, say, February 35, Numbers is smart enough to recognize it that it's seven days past the possible maximum date, which would have been February 28th. So it put it to a Sunday, March 7th, 2021. And notice it made this little blue triangle in the top left of the cell. If I click on that, it just displays a warning saying that the day argument should be between 1 and 31. So it gives you a heads up yet it still displays it without giving an error. So the big question is, when would you use this? It's possible that you might have data that's supplied in a format that numbers is not expecting, and you have to convert it to be a date in order to do some date calculations against it. Um, so for instance, let's say the value entered was 2022-0303. Well, that's just a number. Numbers sees this as numeric. You can convert this to a date using the date function, but in order to do that, you also need some text functions in there in order to break this apart. I'm not going to cover in detail what these text functions are, but I will be using them, and as I do so, I will briefly describe what they're there for, but I will cover the text functions in a future tutorial. So let's make a new formula. So type in the equal sign and date, but I'm not going to press return because when I do that, it kind of forces the, uh, the formatting of the formula. So I will type an opening bracket, 
And the first thing I need to do is get the left four characters of that value we typed in. Even though it's numeric, numbers is pretty flexible with the data type, so I can also treat it as text. So if I type in the word left, opening bracket, choose the cell, which is that date that I typed in, and I'm going to type in a comma four. And what that's doing is it's putting in the first four characters to be the year in this date function. So we've got the date function, and then the first parameter of date was the year, and the year can be found within the left four characters of that cell. Type in a comma, and then we have to do the month. Now the month, we're gonna use a different string function, and we're gonna get some characters within the middle of this text, and there's a command for that. So I'm gonna type in mid, opening bracket, and again, choose the cell, and I wanna type in the position of the starting point of the characters I wanna use, so I'll type in five. So the year is four, and the next character is the fifth one. And then I only want two characters, which would represent the month, the 03. So type in two, and close that bracket. And the last parameter of the date function is the day, the day of the month. So in this case, it's the last two characters of the date that I typed in, and there's a function for that. I can get the right two characters by typing the word right, bracket, again, select the cell one more time, and comma two, to get the right two characters, which would be 03. And then I'm going to do a closing bracket to close the date function. So you can see, if you look at this, we've got the date with the same three parameters, year, month, day, but instead of referring directly to a cell's value or to type in those values directly, we're actually using nested functions, which basically parse out that value we typed in into their year, month, day components. So I'm going to press return, and you can see that it gave us a date value. And you can see that it is indeed a date value. And if I go to the source cell, I can change this date. I'll put in Christmas 1995. There we go. Monday, December 25th, 1995. So this shows you how powerful numbers is. In one statement, I've used four unique built-in functions nested together. One more example is to pull just the year from a cell and construct and display a date range. So I'm going to go to a new field and press equals and date. But this time I will press return because I want the parameters to show up. And for year, I'll pick 2005 again. But for month, I'm going to just type in 1 and 1 for January 1st. And then after that date, I'm going to type in the ampersand, shift 7. And what this will do, what the ampersand does, it concatenates or appends two text values together. I have the date, and then I'm going to add in shift quote or double quote, and then a space and the word 2, and then another space and another shift quote to close the quote. So basically, I've got the date and the word two, and then I'm going to do another ampersand and type in date again and press return, and it gives me the parameters for the date function. So for year, I'm going to choose the same year, but I'm going to do the end of the year. So I'm going to tab over to month and press 12, and then tab over to day and press 31, and then press return. So what that did was that gave me a date range for the year that I selected. So it's showing me 2005, January 1st, to 2005, December 31st. And of course, if I copy that cell and paste it underneath, you can see that it's doing it for each year displayed here. So that's pretty much it. Um, it's a very basic function. In from a programming standpoint, it's a very simple function. It's a very useful function when you need to do some work with dates and your starting point is either text or numeric. Not only did you learn how to use the date function, but you briefly saw some of the text functions that are built into numbers. In the next episode of Apple a Day, I'll be going over the date diff function, which basically gives you the number of days, months, or years between two dates. Thanks as always for watching. I'm John Martins. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Apple a Day.